Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today's class is about S3, Simple Storage Solution. So yesterday we talked about the basic configuration of S3 bucket. So when we create our S3 bucket, you have a lot of options that can be related to the public accessibility, that can be related to the ownership of the object, that is related to, you can say, versioning of data. And along with that, you can choose like what type of encryption and what type of storage class you want to choose for your S3 data. Now, after that, we have a lot of other things, other, you can say, advanced configuration about S3 bucket, which we will be talking in today's class. So the agenda for today's class is enable public access, S3 bucket policies, static website hosting, upload static HTML code, cross region replication, and cross account S3 access. So these are a few things which we will be exploring practically in today's class. So yesterday I was explaining about static website hosting. In case you are planning to host a static website, there is no interaction with the user, but you just want to show something like catalog or you can say some blog is there. That type of things you can do very easily on S3. And you don't have to worry about a separate like web server or website hosting or you can say domain name registration those things you don't have to worry about okay so how to do that first of all we have to disable this block all public access because if you will keep it blocked that means you won't be able to expose your uh, data or you can say expose your static website to the outer world <clears throat> okay so let me go to my account and we'll do it from there. So we'll click on S3. So my S3 bucket 007, right? What we can do is we can create more bucket we will give some name like static website because we will use that website only for that purpose these webs these uh, buckets we will use for some other purpose as well so what i am doing is first of all i am deleting let me see if there is any data okay first of all i am deleting this data because without deleting the data you won't be able to delete the bucket so i am deleting the data from this one Type delete here and delete objects. Close. We'll come back to the bucket list and we'll be deleting this bucket now. So it's asking us to, okay, bucket must be empty. Yeah, that's empty. I have already deleted the data from there. I am just copying the bucket name, putting the bucket name here. Why it is saying? empty bucket we have already deleted that Okay, so there should not be any data. Yeah, that's correct. We'll try to delete this bucket. To keep it simple, like I don't want to uh, create multiple buckets, so I'm just deleting this. I will copy the bucket name. We'll put it here. So whenever you are deleting any resource in AWS, right, it will ask you to write something into a text box. Either it will say type delete or type this one. In this case, they are saying to confirm deletion enter the name of the bucket in the text input field this one 
so we'll click on delete bucket and this bucket should be deleted okay <clears throat> that's good so you can see that this is my first bucket and the access is bucket and object are not public for our static website purpose we will be creating one more bucket and let's quickly do that bucket name my static website 007 so first of all we need to uh, check whether this name is unique or not so other settings just let me quickly check we have to disable this you can disable it later also but now because we are creating this bucket for a static website purpose so we can do it right away i am doing this one and you can read this they are displaying a warning that turning off block all public access might result in the bucket and object within become public but that's fine we are looking for that so you have to acknowledge this because by default this setting is not recommended but yes if you are specifically going with static website concept then yes you can enable it bucket versioning will enable and encryption is fine that's all click on create okay so they are saying that bucket with this name already exists. Let's put one more zero. Okay, still exist. Then we have to use some random number. So what I will do is I will put some random numbers. Okay, so you can see that the second bucket, right? My static website 372. This one, you can see this objects can be public. Now, this is first step. Second step is you have to enable the static website concept. So we'll be going back to the settings. I will show you in a moment. <laughs> Click on your bucket and then click on properties come down okay the last one you can see the last option static website hosting and the current status is disabled so we will click on edit and now we will enable it okay so once you will enable this it will give you a few more options like the first option is index document because every website has a home page, right? And from that home page, you can navigate to other pages. So what is the HTML file for your home page that you have to specify here? By default, that's a like a standard. We, we usually keep it as index.html. But if you want to keep it different, you can do that. So I will give this one only index.html. Now you may be thinking like where exactly index.html is located and what type of content it has. I will show that as well. But as of now, let's do this setting index.html and there's an error document as well. Sometimes suppose someone is trying to access a wrong URL or in that case, instead of like your browser will display like page cannot be displayed, right? Instead of that, if you want to display a meaningful message, Sometimes some websites are down, but if you're trying to access that website, they will display a proper meaningful message that maintenance is going on or this website is under maintenance. This website will be back at this time, something like that, right? So in that case, you can even provide a error uh, page, but that's again optional. If you don't want to provide, it's completely fine. Okay. So the main thing which we have done here is enabling the static website hosting and providing the name of your main uh, home page document that is index.html so that's all and i am clicking on save changes so before we proceed i would like to stop here for two minutes if anyone is having any doubt till this point you can ask me
Okay, seems like there is no doubt. Let me check with someone randomly. <coughs> Uh, Navya, could you please confirm if you have any doubt? No needed. Okay, thanks for the confirmation. So I'm coming back to our website and now we have to upload the code. Because when we are saying static website, that means we should have some HTML code and that will be ultimately uh, hosting our website. So I already have some code available with me and I will upload the same code in the Google Drive so that you can also download the code and you can utilize that to host your website. So I let me quickly check. I should have that. You can see this one eShopper free website template something something is there right so that I will try to upload into our S3 bucket so what I will do is I will come on the objects and upload and not files we will directly upload the folder mm, we will go to downloads I design eShopper let's try this <coughs> and upload. So there will be a lot of things and it will be uploading all that stuff. You can see that 148 total because we are uploading a folder now and that folder has subfolders and then you can say there are many files. So it will be uploaded. Now there should be some option to upload. Yeah, it's there. So click on upload. It will take some time because this time we have a uh, lot of files. <clears throat> Yesterday we were trying to upload a single file, but this time I am uploading the entire folder. So let it upload. Once uploaded, right, we have to do one more thing. Uh, let it complete, then I will explain. In the meantime, if anyone is having any doubt, feel free to ask. Okay, so apart from uh, uploading this data, we have to do one more setting, which is known as bucket policy. So let it upload. In the meantime, I will explain about bucket policy. You can see this one. So every bucket has a bucket policy and that allows, I mean, that defines who can access the data in this bucket. So in case you want to do this static website hosting right you have to provide you have to create a bucket policy as well so let me put this policy this is this is an image but we can search on google just hold on we'll go to google and we'll figure this out so i would say s3 bucket policy for static website Mm, it's here. <clears throat> okay, I think that cannot be correct. Uh, okay, let's take it from official documentation. The first one is official documentation. Okay. This one is your S3 bucket policy. You can copy from here and we'll go back to our <coughs> bucket. It's still taking some time. Let's wait for that. So 
So anyone is having any doubt till now? Do you have any doubt, Dolly? No, sir. Okay, no worries. Just <laughs> give me a moment. Let it finish and then we will be doing the further settings. It's like 60% complete. 72. Okay, so the data has been successfully uploaded. We'll click on close. And one more thing. The data should be directly available because we have provided one file name index.html, right? I will quickly show you. Okay. So I have provided this index.html, right? So this entire stuff, right? Whatever you can see right now, this should be available in the in the I mean root location of still different because ARN would contain the AWS account number, which is not same for a two person. That is unique for everyone. Okay, so I will save this, save changes, and now our website should be accessible. Let's give it a try. Okay, that's great. You can see that I am able to access like a website. Although I did not have any web server running or I did not do much of coding, right? But very easily, very simple way, we have a static website running now. This is my home page. You can click on different uh, links and 